Welcome to the first Sprite Delight tutorial. I'm going to introduce some basic features of the tool and I will demonstrate how to use it to generate normal maps for characters and objects. There are three ways to open a sprite. You can simply load it from file with the button here. Or you can paste it from the clipboard through the menu that pops up when right clicking the image of the sprite tab by clicking paste sprite from clipboard or pressing the Control b shortcut in the Windows version. Keep in mind that the alpha channel containing the transparency information will be lost when using the clipboard. The third way to open a sprite is to just drag and drop the file onto the application when the sprite tab is active. We see how all maps are generated as soon as the sprite is opened and we return to the sprite tab automatically. When clicking the normal tab, we see the already generated normal map which has been calculated based on the shape and details of the subject. By default, the top left pixel in the sprite is used to determine the background color, but you can manually pick a different color if the top left pixel is part of the subject. So I select the solid white of the eyes as the new background color, and we see how the eyes turn out as holes in the normal map. This is not what we want for this character, so I reset it to the transparent white of the sprite's background, we see the number on the color box next to the button. This is the alpha value of the background color. In this case it is zero, so the background is fully transparent. In the normals tab, we can play with the shape and detail intensity that are used to calculate the normals, and we can change the overall intensity afterwards with the scale slider. The volume boost is a pretty powerful tool, as it passes the slope at each pixel to the surrounding pixels in a variable radius while retaining a part of the original slope of the affected pixels. If used properly, this can greatly enhance the volume of normal maps created from flat sprites, which you often have when working with vector art. Higher values can blur the details heavily, which can be countered by increasing the sharpness of the normal map. When using the shape mask, the altered pixels around the subject will become invisible, so the detected background of the original sprite is used as a mask for the normal map. Some game engines and applications work with a different format for the normal maps. That is why Sprite Delight has the options to easily invert the red and green channels holding the horizontal and vertical component of the normals. In some situations, you will want to use the alpha channel of the original sprite for the normal map too, that is what the Sprite Alpha checkbox is for. There's some more advanced settings in the Normals tab, which come in handy when working with specific kinds of sprites and textures or different perspectives. I will show how to use these in the next tutorial. I hope this tutorial helped to understand some of the basic functions of Sprite Delight. Thanks for watching.